Welcome to this Killick Explains video, where what I want to do is address a question I've been asked a lot recently, and that is, what is the actual difference between gambling and investing? With all the noise around GameStop, Robinhood, and so on, not to mention Bitcoin, not to mention perhaps commodities such as gold, what is the sort of behavior that makes someone a gambler as opposed to an investor? And what are some of the key differences? So first of all, the approach. Gamblers in the stock market tend to focus on single stock ideas, and they tend to be happy to pile in to those single stocks. But you see, single stock investing, as it's often known, should technically be called single stock gambling, arguably, in other places too. So within self-invested personal pensions, you sometimes come across people who've invested a huge proportion of their funds into one company. Whereas investors will prefer to run diversified portfolios. Now those portfolios may contain pure equities, they may contain equities and bonds, they may contain equities, bonds and funds, or they may be purely funds based. But nonetheless, investors tend to spread their money over a diversified selection of securities. Next up, the time frame. Gamblers tend to be looking to make a quick buck over a short time horizon. And that puts them in a different bracket to investors. Investors are willing to take a long-term view. Investors will divide up their capital, if you like, their, their wealth into different buckets. Short-term emergencies, medium-term foreseeable calls on capital, and long-term lifetime savings. In other words, they'll take a very structured, planned approach and allocate their funds accordingly. Whereas gamblers will tend to just look to nip in, make a quick buck, and get out again. Then there's the approach. Gamblers often take what I'd call a top-down approach, momentum-driven. They rely heavily on charts, they rely heavily on what other people are up to, and they rely heavily on the idea of spotting a pattern, and they're looking to get ahead of it on the basis that it may repeat itself. Whereas investors tend to be more what I call bottom-up in their approach. They will look at things like profitability, look at cash flow, they will look at valuation metrics. And there's another differentiator, simply the amount of homework, essentially, that investors are prepared to put in as opposed to single stock gamblers. Then there's the way in which these investors behave. So gamblers will tend to follow what I call a bandwagon approach. They're comfortable following the crowd, even if they're not ahead of the crowd. And they're comfortable with taking their signal from other people, whether those other people are operating down the pub, whether they're operating in chat rooms, over email, whatever it may be. Whereas investors tend to be more comfortable taking their own approach. They're prepared to do their own detailed homework, reach their own conclusions, stand back from the crowd, not be lulled into what I call buying high and selling low, when actually you want to be doing the exact reverse of that in practice. Then there's risk. Gamblers tend to be comfortable, even if they don't know it, with a very high level of risk. Why do I say that? Well, no stock is too big to fail. Names such as BP in the past, Marks and Spencer, have shown that they can get things wrong. Names such as Jarvis and Carillion, for example, are no longer with us. So that's getting things horribly wrong. Whereas investors tend to weigh up risk and return. They'll be comfortable in the funds world, perhaps with things like sharp ratios. In other words, they'll set a level of risk they're comfortable with, and then they'll try and maximize the return that they can generate for that given level of risk. And finally, there's review. Gamblers only tend to look back at their successes and will tend to sweep their failures under the carpet. There's heavy survivor bias in gambling. People will brag about, yes, I got the GameStop timing exactly right. You won't hear so much about the people who inevitably got it wrong. Whereas investors are generally more realistic. They should carry out regular reviews, rebalance portfolios, look for evidence that they're overweight or underweight, as it's called, in particular sectors, themes, and or securities, and adjust accordingly. And they're honest. They look at what they're expecting over a particular time frame against what actually happened, both in terms of profits 
and in terms of losses. So their approach is much more systematic. They're not quite as interesting, one can argue, but they do have that approach which allows them to be iterative in terms of adjusting their long-term portfolios. So there you have it. It's a really important distinction. It's a really important one to grasp, particularly as a new investor. Uh, personally, I am an investor. I'm not a gambler. I'm not into things like Bitcoin. I'm not into single stocks, um, whereas other people are. My view would be if you're tempted into those things, uh, set aside an amount of money that you can afford to lose all of rather than risking the bulk of your what I would call lifetime savings in what is essentially a gambling arena. To find out more, do pop into my video library at killick.com forward slash learn. If you'd like to know more about investing, then there is a guide available, How to Invest in Equities. And if you email me, editor at killick.com, I'll be more than happy to forward an electronic copy of it.